What up, everybody? This is your Cosmic Homegirl, and I'm here to give you your Cosmic Weather Report or the astrological forecast for the week of April 21st of 2019. Don't forget that if you want to see how any major planetary um, activity affects you personally by your sign, I do have videos available for that on my website, and the link is in the description area below <clears throat> excuse me so um first of all what is the energy of this week like um and yes i still am trying to get over the stupid cold so i sound horrible but whatever but yeah we have this week the sun in a conjunction with uranus um we have it all week long and, you know, the sun, it does rule the expression of ourselves and our egos. And it is energy, it's vitality. And um, it beams down the energy of whatever it touches, pretty much. And it's in a conjunction with Uranus. And the energy of Uranus is like a wild card. You know, it's anything goes and anything can just pop up unexpectedly. And Uranus, it does rule lightning and electricity and you know like being zapped pretty much out of the blue so that's some things that could be going on it's like um and it, it rules technology too so there could be people having issues with their internet and their technology there could be people just doing things out of the blue doing things that are expressing themselves in very unique ways too and especially taurus people because this is in the sign of taurus and Uranus is a planet of great change, um, like drastic changes that nobody would ever expect out of you. And it's it rules eccentricity too, like being eccentric. So I, you know what I've noticed? Okay. Um, so I do have a friend and she on the day um, that the sun is in a, an exact conjunction with Uranus, which is the 22nd of April. They're both at two degrees of Taurus, right? I don't know where Taurus is at in her natal chart. I only know like her sun sign, but she did post something to where she's like, oh, I've never done this before. I did some sort of like um, bikini competition, you know, she's like, I'm just feeling like just showing off my body and I'm proud of it, even though I've had a couple of kids. Um, so it's she felt free and liberated and did something totally just outside of her comfort zone and that is definitely what uranus can bring and the sun in a conjunction with it is definitely making people step outside of their comfort zone with certain things um uranus is a planet of rebellion and freedom so a lot of people are you know just maybe they are liberating themselves from something um maybe they are feeling more rebellious and I have seen, you know, it's crazy. And also, um, during this time, <laughs> I had a, a friend of mine, um, take some, you know, just some random pictures of me while we were hanging out together. And I had to take a picture flipping off the camera. And I know some people will be offended by that, but whatever, you know, that's the, that's what Uranus's energy brings too is rebelliousness. Like you just don't, don't care. It is that whatever I do what I want. Um, and you know, so yeah, I've noticed I, I took a picture like that. Um, when I, you know, briefly scrolled through Instagram, I saw a couple other <laughs> girls, um, taking pictures, you know, with flipping off the camera and stuff like that, because it is just like, I just do whatever I want and I don't care what anybody thinks about it. So that energy is totally in the air right now. There's a YouTuber that I've been following for years, Shameless Maya. I don't know if any of you guys are familiar with her, but I absolutely love her. I've been following her since way, way back, way back. And she is a Taurus sun sign. And um, I saw her post something on the day that the sun was in, was exact with the earnest saying that she never colors her hair. You know, she never dyes her hair like in any different colors. And she's like, I'm suddenly in the mood for a change. I think I need a change. You know, anybody know a good colorist in LA? So yeah, I've never seen her with different color hair. I think she went blonde once. Um, 
but that's it that I can remember. And yeah, so it is stepping outside of your comfort zone and doing wacky things, maybe with your appearance, things that um, like looks that people wouldn't expect out of you or whatever, you know. So this energy is upon us the whole entire week. Um, I'm absolutely loving it myself <laughs> especially because this is you know very close to uh some of my planets that i have in taurus and my natal chart so definitely been feeling that that you know i do what i want i'm a rebel and and um you know stuff like that but also this energy can be making us just break free from old anywhere wh wherever taurus is at <coughs> sorry um especially wherever taurus is at in your natal chart this this is you know you breaking free and um for some people it could be with work for some people it could be with relationships they're freeing themselves from someone or uh just some old ways of you know behaving within relationships or wanting a new start or things to be sparked up again in an existing relationship um I mean, it, it, it just depends on you and your chart. But yeah, this is definitely bringing some newness to the mix. Newness that we may be resistant towards at first because this is in the fixed sign of Taurus that could be very stubborn and resistant to change. Um, you know, also something very interesting is we celebrated Earth Day as well and also 420. And um, both have to do with things that are green you know that grow out of the earth the earth's natural resources well over the last several days i have seen some um and maybe i'll share them on my instagram stories at least i have seen some ads for makeup that is cannabis infused um let me just see i'm just trying to look and see so i saw or i saw some um some makeup brushes that have little cannabis leaves floating in them in the handle and then I also saw, yeah, some some sort of makeup that was um, cannabis infused. I can't find the, I thought I took a, a screenshot. Oh, I did. It's uh, Lime Crime, Lime Crime makeup. Um, it's some sort of, what is it, a lip gloss or lip color. And it says it's infused with cannab cannabis sativa oil. So pretty much Taurus rules our natural resources. And you know how everybody is trying to, uh, you know, not everybody, but there's people that want um, cannabis to usage to be more m widespread, more open, not e not being illegal. You know, they want it legalized. Um, I can tell you guys one thing. One of my predictions with Uranus and Taurus has always been the legalization of it. And, you know, now they're doing stuff like this. There's a cannabis-infused mascara that already came out. What brand was it that came out with it? I want to say Milk Makeup. Um, I can't remember, but I know Jeffree Star has promoted it. Um, but yeah, so, <clears throat> sorry, there is um, more of, of that, you know, being shown and coming through with Uranus being in Taurus by itself. But, you know, like the sun and Uranus together are highlighting things like that. Um, so I'm finding that to be very, very interesting. And um, yeah, so the whole week, you know, we have the sun and Uranus close to one another. Now we also have Venus in a conjunction with Chiron. Um, it's more exact the 23rd, like real, really early on the 23rd, but this is an influence that we are being under the whole week. Um, yeah, pretty much the whole entire week, we're under this influence of Venus and Chiron in a conjunction. Now, um, I did talk about this when I did th just the general monthly forecast for the month of April. If you guys want to go check that out to get more details of how this affects us all, but um, pretty much, you know, Venus is money, it is our um, sense of you know, like it, it's it's what we find beautiful in this world and pleasant in this world. And it is also um, our, you know, self-esteem, self-worth. And if we think of ourselves as being beautiful and worthy, Venus rules that too. Chiron is pain and healing. So let me tell you guys, I have this conjunction in my own natal chart, not in Aries, but in Taurus. And 
this can bring out some issues. I did see some posts um, from a couple of people talking about body dysmorphia. If you guys don't know what that is, it means like you have this really negative perception of your physical appearance and your body that only you see and everybody else is like, what are you talking about? You look just fine. There's nothing wrong with you, but you see yourself as this hideous monster when you look in the mirror and you think that your body is just really disproportioned or there's something wrong with you, you know? Um, so it's like you have this really big problem with, with how you look. And I saw a, peop- a couple of people post this around this exact conjunction here. And um, it is definitely something that um, is real, you know, being un- very unhappy with your appearance and wanting to do something about it and fix it. Um, and I saw another another young lady, a young lady, that makes me sound like an old lady saying that. Another chick, um, she said, you know what, I'm going to get my boobs done. That's another like body issue that she has, you know, that she has with herself. She wants to heal it and correct it in her own way. So um, I've seen stuff like that. I've seen people talk about, you know, their whatever nationality they identify as or race or whatever. And just more talks about that. And um, because Aries does rule those things, you know, your physical appearance, your physical body. And if you and your identity and, and if you relate your identity to your nationality or your race or your um, your gender, whatever like category you put yourself under, um, Aries energy definitely rules that. And Venus can be, you know, Venus conjunct Chiron could be something that's like you're sensitive about it and um, you want to heal something about it. Um, yeah. And, you know, Aries is also like exercise and being physically active for the sake of, you know, and then Venus can be for the sake of your appearance. Um, so maybe some people around this time are realizing their body goals and wanting to sign up for gym memberships or whatever they have to do, start a new diet plan. Um, yeah, I'm actually doing something like that too under this conjunction. I'm not very happy with my physical body. And I know whenever I say that, some people are like, oh, what are you talking about? You know, I have, like I said, I have this conjunction in my natal chart and I've always had an issue with my appearance. Um, that's a long story. But anyway, so I'm on a mission to, um, I lost weight. I got sick last month in March twice and with like a flu type virus. And, um, I lost weight each time. So I lost like 15 pounds and I'm a very small lady by nature, always have been, always will be. Um, so losing 15 pounds, makes a hell of a difference like you can really see it so um i started something actually under this conjunction to um like like a plan you know and and a diet and all that to gain that weight back because i was very happy at that weight i was so happy when i was 15 pounds heavier you guys have no idea like (laughs) you know what i'm saying being so small and thin your whole life to where it's all people ever talk to you about or or that's how they identify you and like that's not how I want people to know me I want people to know me as me for my personality my interests not oh this girl yeah she's so skinny or whenever relatives haven't seen you in a long time the first thing that comes out of their mouth is something about your weight whether you've lost weight or gained weight and I'm like hi hello yeah it's me um I'm doing great I'm interested in this and I'm doing this yeah, there's other things to me other than just my weight and how much or how little it has fluctuated. That's not how I want to be identified. Okay, like I want to be identified as me for other reasons beyond the physical. So I was very happy at a different weight because it was more average and nobody made a big deal. You know, it anyway. I'm not here to just talk about me, Um, but I'm just letting you guys know I have this in my natal chart. This plays out every single day of my life. So this is all of us under this influence. It can affect us all in different ways, but there's some of those similar themes that can come up for a lot of people based around their body, their appearance, their identity, and and so on. And also love and um, 
you know, pain and healing that has to do with love and relationships. Some of us are going through that too. Um, this can be about like whether or not to forgive someone, you know, in, in a relationship situation to where you felt hurt and, and pained by them. Um, should you forgive them or, you know, and not allowing yourself to suffer anymore in some sort of way, um, wanting to patch up and mend relationships too with people that can be the, you know, what happens when we're under this influence this week. Hopefully it's no one actually experiencing new pain within relationships, but Hey, if it comes up, just know it's divine timing. And there is a lesson, uh, there is a lesson behind it. There is healing that can happen. And through the healing and the lessons, you can learn a lot about yourself. You can learn a lot in order to help other people. There's a quote that I came across also the other day that seems appropriate for this Venus conjunct Chiron transit. And um, let me see if I can find it. Um, it says, and it's by um, Billy. It's I am, he's I am brilliant. I am brilliant on Instagram and um, Twitter and or Billy Chapata. I think that's how you say his name. It says, you felt warm at first. You looked like love up close. But were you were, what you were was a lesson disguised as love, a lesson on how to love myself. And I'm like, yo, what a per what perfect timing for him to post that poem. He's a poet, writes a lot of dope poems. To post that poem during this Venus and Chiron transit because that is totally a lesson that can come up is something about loving yourself um, in order to be able to love others or before you love others, you know, or not relying upon others and their love or their attention for validation of yourself. Um, with me having this in my natal chart, that is a huge problem that I have been really slapped in the face by certain transits um, with lessons, you know, over the last like month or, or a little more is exactly that, you know, taking any, uh, losses or pains that I've suffered, um, through relationships and, and a lack of attention and validation and, and, you know, learning that I don't have to look to others i'm talking about men that i've dated um not looking to them as my only source of that but looking within you know and just validating yourself and feeling good about yourself and um sometimes when you go through relationship stuff and you feel like you can't live and breathe without a person or you know you miss the attention that they gave you and you feel like you're lacking in some sort of way without it it's really, uh, you know, maybe they were taken away as far as the relationship having to end because you lack in your own love of yourself. So you have to learn that first before you can, you know, function properly in a relationship with another person. And maybe the universe is teaching you that. Um, anyway, I thought it was a really dope poem, so appropriate for this transit. I hope everybody's doing okay out there under this influence. Maybe some people aren't even affected one bit. Maybe it's just like skippity doo da. You're going on about your life and feeling wonderful about yourself and your relationships. Some people may not really be affected, but some of us may be though. Okay, so um, Venus is conjunct Chiron this week, and then. We have Pluto going retrograde this week. Um, it goes retrograde on the 24th. So Pluto retrograde, it'll be retrograde until the beginning of October. So um, October 2nd or October 3rd, depending upon where you are in the world, is when Pluto um, goes direct. So it goes from 23 degrees of Capricorn back to, what was it, 14... Um, back to 13 degrees yeah third from 20 degrees capricorn wait 
no, I'm sorry. That's Saturn. Duh. Okay. <laughs> From 23 degrees back to 20 degrees. Um, and it's crazy because, yeah, we have Saturn at 20 degrees of cap going retrograde at that same 20th degree. And um, that's also a transit that happens. Oh, it happens next week. So I'll talk about it next week. But yeah, Pluto goes retrograde from 23 back to 20 degrees of Capricorn. So if you have any placements in your natal chart at that 20th degree of Capricorn, um, any placements at all, your sun or any other planets, that can be a very significant point in your chart to where you're going to have a lot of faded events happen this year or um, a lot of like transformation, you know, that 20 degree mark. But yeah, Pluto goes retrograde um 23 degrees cap it goes retrograde for you know about five to six months and um this is pluto's power and pluto's energy being turned inwards lots of lots more inner transformation and diving deep within yourself to figure some things out and to clear some things out pluto is um a planet of getting rid of things, destroying things, going within to clear out anything that's old and gross, pretty much. Um, I'm speaking metaphorically, but it can be like physically and literally too. Um, like detoxes can happen during this time, but this is a long period of time, you know, so it's not like, I don't, if you, I don't know if you're going to go on a five to six month detox or cleanse. Um, I'm not a doctor. I don't know if that's even recommended to do stuff like that for that long, but it could just be like within your life in some area, you're going to be doing that. And um, Scorpios will feel this the most because this is one of their ruling planets. It's your, your ruling planet going retrograde Scorpio. So there's going to be a lot more soul searching as if we don't do that enough, right, Scorpios? <laughs> a lot more like soul searching, going deep within, um, deep in the subconscious mind, facing a lot of fears, you know, facing um, your own like inner demons and, and paranoias and stuff and figuring all that stuff out. Um, so yeah, that's Pluto going retrograde. And then on the 27th, we have Mars squaring Neptune. So Mars squaring Neptune. Um, Neptune is at 17 Pisces. So yeah, this is like the 26th or like the 27th, depending upon where you live, um, that this happens, this Mars and Neptune square. So yeah, it is a the 27th um it, that it's gonna happen yeah so i'm trying to get it to like the exact degree okay here we go okay so early in the morning i'm on the west coast once again you guys pacific time um so if you're on that time this transit is exact really early in the morning like after 6 a.m but um, if you're anything east of that, it's like later in the morning or it could be in the afternoon or early evening for you or whatever. So Mars and Neptune square and they are immutable signs. OK, and technically, even though it's not exact, it's still Mars is still making an opposition to Jupiter in Sag, another mutable sign. But it's in an exact square to Neptune. But Jupiter is in the mix. Now, both Jupiter and Neptune are dreamer planets. They're um, planets of seeing way out there and um, beyond, way out there beyond, you know, and not really looking at the small details, the small print, so to speak. So you're only looking at the big picture and you're only seeing what you want to see in the way that you want to see or perceive it. And Mars is action. So a lot of people will be jumping and taking actions based on the big picture, the the ideal outcome that they've dreamt up for themselves. And, um, you know, the there could be a lesson here in making sure that you don't just jump without checking if you have a parachute and if the parachute works, you know, pretty much that's what this is. This transit can cause is people to not really be focused on um the the reality of outcomes of their actions consequences of their actions or 
yeah, just kind of jumping and doing things. Um, but also, you know, and with all this mutable energy, like squaring each other and opposing, there's always heightened chances of robbery and thievery and deception with those. Okay. So if you're dealing with somebody who has a tendency to creep, to be a player, to be dishonest, let me tell you, this is energy that brings more of that out of people who are more susceptible to that type of behavior. Okay, so around the 27th, you may want to keep an eye out for any shady behaviors if you deal with a shady character. Whether that's in a relationship you have or, you know, you in any type of like a business relationship, anything. If you suspect somebody shady, they will probably try some shady stuff. I always think of like in really old cartoons, right? You know how they used to show robbers and thieves? They always had a striped shirt on, black and white striped shirt, and some sort of Zorro mask. And I might be speaking in language that younger people are like, what the hell is a Zorro? And I've never seen these old ass cartoons, <laughs> but they have like a, like a mask on just over their eyes only a black one. Right. And the, and this black and white striped shirt, that's how they used to show robbers. And they would like wear black pants and black shoes and have black gloves. Be like, hey, you're rubbing their hands together. Like they're scheming, they're plotting, you know, something to, um, to, to, to pull like a jack move on somebody pretty much and that's what I picture when I see all this mutable energy like this unfortunately it's like <laughs> what can I get away with yeah so really uh be on guard you guys I'm not you know I'm not promoting paranoia or anything like that but be on guard with your um your homes your vehicles your personal items personal information because unfortunately this energy right here will make people act out in some weirdo ways, okay? Um, yeah, but other than that, it's just, you know, for the rest of us, we may leap before we look and then be like, oh, whoops, uh-oh, maybe I shouldn't have done this or done that. Um, we didn't look at the consequences of things. So, you know, just be aware of this transit, but the Mars and Neptune square alone. Now, even though this is a square, it's a challenging aspect. It's deemed as being negative in a way. Um, if you are somebody who's, who put, applies your, you apply creativity with action. You combine creativity and action together. This is energy that is, um, very actually beneficial for you because, you, this is like dancers, pretty much like dancers. If you're a dancer, if you're a martial artist, if you do any type of movement that's creative, um, this gives you a boost in your creativity that's added to your movements. Okay. So it is good for, for some things like that, but for practical real world stuff, no, this is an energy that can cause you to lose your sense of direction of where you're going, whether you are driving, you're walking, you're taking public transportation, you're riding a bike, it doesn't matter. You can lose track of where you're going and what you're doing physically, okay? Um, what else with Mars square Neptune? This can pe be people who, um, you know, you need to watch out for yourself too because this could be people not just like, you know, they break into your house or to your car or, or steal some of your info. That's more like a Mercury square Neptune thing, but a Mars square Neptune can be the actual things where someone physically crosses the line with someone else, sees no boundaries between themselves and others physically. So that means unfortunately there could be a heightened chance of being physically attacked by someone who's trying to scheme on you and they're trying to get something out of you that they want, whether it's physically grabbing, you know, your wallet or your purse or something on you, or they want to physically take advantage of you in a different way. And they just do not see the boundaries between uh, themselves and what or who they want. Okay. And that's another reason why I say this is a creep in transit. Yeah. Because people will just be like, I physically want, which is Mars this person and I'm, you know, ideally fantasizing about them, which is Neptune and just, you know, going after that, even though, the, and they're not even thinking about the fact that the other person that they 
want to go after maybe doesn't really care for their advances and and they won't care because it's neptune energy spring fog you know um and jupiter in the mix kind of can add to that that stupidity of just like doing stuff like that crossing the line so yeah very strong on the 27th if you are somebody that is um you know uh any everybody you just need to protect yourselves okay like have one eye one uncle ruckus eye looking you know in the other direction making sure there's no shadiness going on while the other one is looking forward to see where you've got to go okay um so pretty much that's the energy this week you guys and i forgot to mention um (coughs) sorry that um the the south node and saturn are both at that 20th degree this whole week and um this is south node can be karma and karmic lessons and saturn can be karmic lessons too and they are exactly conjunct this week so um this could be a really karmic week of some hard lessons you guys and you know some maybe old behaviors and and people and things that we have to let go of that yeah it's a hard lesson and it's but it's very karmic and it is for the evolution of your yourself as a soul, as a uh, spiritual being, perhaps, you know. Um, so, yeah, depending upon where Capricorn is in your natal chart is where you could be going through some some hard lessons, some harsh realities, maybe. Um, you know, maybe Saturn, Saturn can give it and Saturn can take it away, just like a strict father. So maybe there's some things being taken away and stripped away from you. But you have to look at the deeper meaning to find what the lesson is in it and maybe how maybe how you can benefit from it, even though it sucks and it feels like Saturn just being a big old meanie and a bully and, and a mean father. Um, there is some something that you are supposed to learn in order to push you forward as a a better person, as a soul, as a, you know, a spiritual, uh, soulful being. So yeah the south node and saturn and capricorn also there could be some things um more collectively that are based around our elders our leaders um it's even like presidents and political leaders anybody that's in positions of authority parental figures bosses you know maybe there's people who are in saturnian type of positions in life um there's some things that they may be going through you know that are very karmic so just pay attention to um to that if that comes up but just for ourselves in general yeah wherever capricorn is in your chart a lot of huge karmic lessons here um revolving around saturn if you are you suit are you too saturnian yourself or you restrict yourself and you hold yourself back because you have a lot of fears and doubts Or are you not Saturnian enough to where you see no consequences to your actions? You have no accountability. Then that's what you could be being slapped with here during this time. So um, that's it, you guys. That's what the astrological forecast, the cosmic weather is for this week that we are in, um, lasting through the 28th of April. So I will be back next week. I may have something special next week because it's my birthday week um so stay posted here to my channel and um i'll let you guys in on what that is once i figure it out (laughs) but um i hope everybody has a great week and i will see you guys in my next video don't forget to follow me on instagram i am bringing back my posts i promise i was very low energy very low vibrational for a while i'm still bringing my vibration back up uh due to a lot of personal stuff that was going on and as i do i'll have more energy to give to everybody um and you know continue posting as much as i was before on instagram with all kinds of astrological tidbits and information and um you know, cool graphics and all that stuff that I've discovered. So, um, yeah, make sure you guys follow me on Instagram under cosmic homegirl at cosmic homegirl. Um, I'm also on Twitter 
as well. <coughs> Sorry, I'm also on Twitter as well. Um, I don't do a lot of horoscope stuff. It's mostly like random things about astrology and life. <laughs> so if you care about that, then follow me on Twitter too. All right, guys, I'll see you guys next time. Peace. Peace.